Okay, so let us continue, Mr. Martin. Uh, before I, I cannot, I will just quote from your book, okay? Sure. So you said that Christ was a master of logic and the true follower of Christ becomes a master of logic, becomes a perpetual student of God's law, for no one yet knows all that he knows, and becomes unconditionally loving for God is love, and becomes perfectly responsible for as Christ said, the truth will set you free. Oh my God. Becomes utterly humble to God and to the needs of others. For Christ said not to resist evil and no force is needed to perform miracles and becomes fearlessly confident in God and in their own ability to learn his perfect wisdom. For he has created them exactly for this task. Now, Mr. Martin, these are deep words, scientific and, and spiritual. But tell me about your background, Re starting with your grandfather. I know he has something to do with it. Start that story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, my, my maternal grandfather was a, a Southern Baptist minister. And uh, so I grew up in a, a Southern Baptist home. Uh, my mother, uh, as a child, uh, uh, traveled, of course, with my grandfather uh, when he went to Africa to be a missionary there in, in Nigeria. No father? My father, uh, he was uh, a bit more adventurous in, uh, <laughs> in, the, area, in the area of philosophy uh, oh my God. and religion. He, he would read from the Bible, but he would also read from the Bhagavad, oh, Bhagavad Gita. I know. And, Hare Krishna. Uh, Buddhist oh, Mr. Uh, Martin. writing and, Mr. and other, other... I know you have a lot of stories to tell. Sorry to cut you off, but you mentioned about Nigeria. I have a lot of Christian friends in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Can you um, uh, start begin that way again? How did you develop as a Southern Baptist in Nigeria? Well, no. I. My grandfather was a, a missionary in Nigeria in the 1930s. Before the war. Oh, my God. Before the war. Yes. And then uh, I was Never. born in 1950, which was after long, the war. Uh, after the war, That's and long mean. after my grandfather came back to the United States. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> but um, at the age of nine, I felt a spiritual longing that wasn't satisfied by the Southern Baptist Church. Southern, and, yeah. Baptist. And and so. I started to explore other, other, other ideas, other, other thoughts on uh, spirituality and religion. My father would occasionally, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, read from um, other books uh, about. Uh, Buddhist monks performing miracles. So he opened your scientific eye, your dad, but your grandfather, the Christian side. Right. So, Mr. Martin, I know your background made you write this book. What year did you write this book, The Logical Christian? Oh, let's see. It was recently. Uh, recently, only, and you had an experience with these kind of things at nine years old or even <laughs> the day you well, were born. This, this was published in uh, 2021. Recently, but yeah, your background is ago. too much to prepare okay. for it. Okay. Well, so tell me about the book now. Well, a little bit more about my background first. The, oh, okay, um, we didn't finish. <laughs> yeah. I felt. Uh, a longing to explore mm -hmm. and to learn mm -hmm. from as many possible sources as mm -hmm. I could. Yeah. And uh, during my teenage years, until I was in my mid thirties, I was studying Scientology. Is it? Which so was, you were never which, you were never married. Only Jovi is your wife, or? Uh, I was married twice before. Before Jovi. Yes. And you are busy with these things while you are married? Mm, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, now Scientology is, is a religion. Yeah. Um, Jimmy, with, um, you can take your camera. Huh? You can use your camera. Yeah, that I'm one. Okay. I'm there. But uh, af 
after uh, the mid 80s, I switched to studying Buddhism. Influenced and, by your father. Well, partly, yes, and and partly because I was interested in learning more about uh, that great spiritual leader and why did he? Who? Sadama. Uh, Sadama. No, that's Sadama, another episode. Siddhartha. No, Gautama Siddhartha Buddha. Oh, that's not Hare Krishna. That's no, that's that Buddhism. That's Buddhism. Siddhartha Gautama Buddha. Yeah. Yes, he was. Uh, he was a prince, and he was prince. destined to be king of uh, a small kingdom in northern India, and he gave it all up. He he wanted to uh, to explore his spiritual nature and how do you how do you find the freedom from this. More Mundane realm. world. Yeah, but he was more accepted not in India but in China. I thought Buddhism well, came from China. <laughs> well, it, it certainly <laughs> expanded into China. Um, accepted. There, yeah, I was more accepted there, and um, but it expanded to Japan and then later into uh, the Western world. Those in, countries in are century. progressive. Red China, <laughs> no. Well, they want to be powerful. In, yeah, progressive in some ways, yes. So you're but, not yet prepared to talk about your book, because yeah. you want, yeah, because well, you wanted, um, you have a great background. Because you know, sometimes when you write a book, you need to be an authority while you're writing it. So is there more preparation, like before you wrote this? Because you wrote this. What other well, things that inspired you to write this in 2021? And you have been very experienced since childhood. Well. Uh, after Buddhism, I studied uh, Judaism and Kabbalah, and that that opened up my mind. You studied to, everything. Well, not not everything, but uh -huh. uh, I discovered in the Bible, in the Old Testament, a code that Dan Brown. No. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. Not Dan, not Dan Brown. There's a code. But there's a there's a code in Genesis which reveals huh? a biblical timeline that's compatible with those of science. Which blew me away. I mean Can you share fact, to me the verse? Because there's no code in the Bible. Oh there is. Yes, there <laughs> is. Okay. Well you for instance you for never, instance oh, yeah. the 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 patriarchs in Genesis 5 all live to outrageously long numbers of years. Um, the Abraham thing? No, this is before Abraham. This was Genesis uh, this is was, Abraham. This was Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Um, Seth and Canaan and um, Lamech. The, so, in, in Genesis five, the, those those people, Methuselah, Methuselah lived for nine hundred and eighty. Is it years. mentioned in Genesis? Genesis five, Genesis chapter five, and these. these so these Abraham guys came in Exodus. Well, Abraham came later in Genesis. Oh, later okay. in Genesis, oh, but Genesis so the, five. Oh my God! There's Genesis a shortcut five, that we know. Genesis five tells us these outrageous ages. And if you read Genesis 5, 2 and carefully, it says that <clears throat> uh, I should have brought Adam, my Bible. Adam was was um, you got created in, a, in and, the ribs and male and female, God created them. And oh, the, the creation and, story. And, they call, and he called their name Adam. Their name? Their name. Not his. Their. And when you read that and you look at the, That's the, the fact that it's male and female and their name, it's plural, you start to realize that maybe each one of these names in Genesis 5 is a tribe, an eponymous tribe. 
the tribe is named the Adam. Multiplied. And so that, so that all these outrageous years, how can Adam live for 900 and what is it? 932 Just years? Adam and Eve. <laughs> and Methuselah, 986. And Lamech, 777 years. Well, that's, a, that's part of the code. And the code is that these were tribes created first that that lived one after the other overlapping in in their their lifespans but we know from science yeah. that man lived for at least 200,000 years well if adam if we take the bible literally then it should be adam, spiritually adam mm -hmm. Was created 4004 BC. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't that doesn't fit science. Science says 200,000 BC. We exist already. Yeah, 200,000 BC. Well, so how does the Bible? And maybe maybe it wasn't meant to. But how would the Bible be compatible with the truths that we find in science? Well, here's how. Genesis is full of code, and the years in Genesis 5 are coded years. Oh, and there's a code that, allow, that tells you how to decode those years. To well, decode means to understand. To understand and to find the truth of. Uh -huh. Well, in Genesis 5, it, it starts with, these are the generations of Adam. How long is a generation? It is very long indeed. Well, a, gener a generation is grandfather, it, grandmother. We don't we don't know how long a generation is by the def by the dictionary definition. It's mm -hmm. very vague. It can be from um, the birth of a father up to the birth of their firstborn. Yeah, because that's a generation. But that could, that could be... That's the that offspring. Could be, that could be 15 years. That could be 90 years. We don't know. Okay. Okay. So, so tribes so, exist. Now, there is a clue in Genesis 6-3 mm -hmm. where it says, And the years of man shall be 120. That's a clue. The years of man shall be 120. So, so, now, so we die at 120. Well, <laughs> if you look through the Bible and you find the one person who lived to exactly 120 years. Abraham. No. Moses. Oh, the ruler. And, you know, I'm and, confused of Moses and Joseph, but Moses ruled Egypt or he never no, see the promised land? He, he, he was... Uh, someone who helped the Israelis escape from Egypt. And, and they're they building and they the, 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 the Sphinx. Okay. But they, here's, here's the thing. Moses yeah. lived for 120 years. Mm -hmm. And when I described this project that I was working on to research the, the Bible and, and, and history, uh, a, a friend at work said, well, Kabbalah. The Kabbalah, Jewish, the Jewish tradition. Of course, that's of a chosen race. They should have their own culture. The Jewish tradition of Kabbalah yeah. says that you're supposed to separate out your life into thirds, one third for your parents and their family, and you dedicate another third of your life to your, yourself, your wife, and your own family. And then the last third of your life, I'm in the you last dedicate part. to God. Oh my God, I think and to the I'm in my last of, stage. And, happiness and, and truth. And to the pursuit of, of, of knowledge and truth. Oh, I remembered only the second, which is for the family, then the pursuit of the truth, true knowledge. And what was the first one? The first one was to dedicate that part of your life to your parents and their family. Oh, but that's so, the family. That's the second one. To your parents mm. is the first one. Ah. To your wife and your own family. As the second generation. Is the second. Yeah. Okay. And then the third part is to God and truth. 
Okay. I'm in the third and, part. And what I realized afterward, several several days later, uh -huh. is that Triple Moses three. divided his life into perfect thirds. Forty years for the family that he grew up in. Hundred twenty. Forty years. Eighty. With his own family oh my and traveling through the desert with uh, the israelis oh my god no no 40 40 years with his own family in uh, medea and then and then 40 years traveling with the israelis through the desert doing god's work uh -huh. okay so that's that's the four the three parts of his life 40 years each okay but we so have thought, a can we apply his life, but we have a short-lived life, so we don't have a life at all. <laughs> okay, so for Genesis 5, a generation mm -hmm. is 40 years. And 40 is a common number throughout the entire Bible. Times 4. The reigning 40 days and 40 nights for Noah's flood. I know! Jesus yeah. prayed for 40 days! Yes, he went in, out into the, I'm sorry. the desert mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, fasted for 40 days. And it says life begins at 40. Wow. wow. Okay. Is it your first time to hear that? <laughs> no, you know. I've heard a lot of different ages. So we yeah. are still young. Yeah. <laughs> if life okay. begins at 40 and then... Okay. Well, if you multiply... Mm -hmm. The ages in Genesis 5 mm -hmm. times 40, mm -hmm. that ends up with lots of years, lots of extra years. For and, our lifetime? And what I calculated is that going from Moses back to Noah, Noah's flood happened 27,930 B.C. Wow! Now, if you took the Bible literally, mm -hmm. that would be 2,346 B.C. Oh, picture, pic, picture, but picture, there were too many, people in the, too many people in the world at that time. So Noah's flood couldn't have happened then. So are you aware of the 144,000 in the last, in the Revelation? Uh, I... Yes, that's a different topic. I'm aware of it. But what I found is that there's evidence uh -huh. that Noah's flood actually did happen. Of course! 28,000 BC. Yeah. There's actual physical evidence. In fact, one species went extinct at that time. Uh huh. And that was, according to my research, the target of the flood. The to... flood targeted one specific species. Is it a God directed the flood or nature directed? Or it has to happen to kill people and to start a new generation? Or what is that flood for? The flood, Noah's flood, was an act of love. And to save and humanity. To save God's children. Ooh. And if you read Genesis 1, it says that God created man in his own image. And God You can video now from there. And okay. God is not Homo sapiens. Homo sapien is human. God is not human. He's spirit. Oh, so, so the, we, the, the latest principle is God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we well, are not three in one. That's that's doctrine. A, that's a false doctrine. Oh my God! So in your book, in your book, Mr. Martin, going back to the book before we talk about a lot of things, logically, when we speak of God, it's not the saving power of God through Jesus. It is the God in the olden days in the order. What does this mean? I thought this will make you become closer to Jesus. At what? We talk about always. Uh, That's what your okay. grandfather always talk about, and you said something is missing. Something is so missing. So what is definitely. this book okay. all about? Well, 
part of the book describes the, this research that I did in Genesis and the, the, ah. the target of the flood uh -huh. was a species that was destroying man's chances at spiritual enlightenment. Oh, of course they're not aware. They were just created. They don't have that intelligence because there's a tree of knowledge of evil and good. So they are deprived to... It's okay. another topic. Oh my God. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> we're right. getting there. Okay. <laughs> now, what, <clears throat> what I realized is that the, the numbers did not quite add up. I, I got to the flood and that seemed to match. <laughs> But getting to Adam, that fell short by a hundred thousand years. And I thought, well, what am I missing? What Several is it? weeks later, I figured it out. What is it? In we Genesis were video, 4. Video. Uh, picture na lang And then, in with Juvie. In Genesis 4, uh -huh. I found my clue. With Juvie, uh-huh. What is it? From Genesis 1, Genesis you completed, 4. and then you started with Genesis 5, but you just discovered what it is in Genesis 4 after knowing Genesis 5 always, right? You always base it in Genesis 5. Now, now we're well, going back to 1. and G Genesis 4 gave us two numbers. Code, you mean? That, that's code, yeah. yes. Cain killed Abel. Oh, through and jealousy. Yes. He was jealous because Abel was receiving favor from God for his humility and his happiness to give to God. Oh, wow. And Cain was, oh, I'm not sure I want to sacrifice part of my production to There's give to God. There's always good and evil. Yeah, well, he was selfish. <laughs> and he was so selfish that he killed his, his brother Abel. Now, what is strange about the story of Cain and Abel is yeah. that Cain mm. was afraid that somebody might kill him. So God protected because, them. Because of greed? No, because of whatever. For any, for any <laughs> whatever. reason. But yeah. So Cain received protection from God by God placing a mark on him. And his uh, race towards Jesus. David. Cain, Cain received a mark which said that if anybody hurts Cain, it'll be back, given back to that other person seven times over. Oh my God, God watches everything and, for a good person and blessed the other one, and blessed him. Okay. And later, I think five or six generations later, Lamech, great, oh, great, yeah. great, great, Seth great, great, great grandson of Methuselah. Cain, of, no. Yeah. That's that's a different lineage. That's yeah, this Genesis is, five. This is Cain's lineage. lineage. There's a Lamech who is a great, 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 great grandson of Cain, uh -huh. who happened to kill two men and begged God, please protect me. If if God can protect Cain seven times over, then Why not any, you? anybody who happens to hurt me should get it times 77 up. times. Oh my God. He will uh, be avenge. vengeful for you. Avenge. Venge. Well, okay. Now, we have to realize that mm -hmm. the Bible is in code. There's wisdom there. And it's, it's difficult for people to understand spiritual concepts, so it has to be written in code to make, to force the person to think more Oh deeply. my God, I'm ready to think now, uh, nowadays. Okay, okay. Mr. Martin. Need to think more, more uh -huh. deeply. And what I realized is that those codes apply to Genesis 5. I will read that and think. So, Mr. Martin, because we have a very lengthy discussion about it, it's almost 30 minutes, can you tell them why they should avail of this book? Okay, well, this, this talks about not only the logic that Christ uh -huh. displayed when, when his enemies tried to trap him, uh -huh. He, he found a very easy way. He just, he made their, their trap 
fall apart using superior logic. For instance, dying on the cross? For instance, there's one point in the Bible where his enemies try to trick him, try to trap him uh -huh. by saying, uh, should we pay taxes to Caesar or should we refuse to pay taxes to Caesar? Give Caesar what Caesar's deserve. Okay, and now what this what this was was a trap to 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 Control. put him between between a rock and a hard place on the horns of dilemma. And What's Christ really? realized Christ realized Give to Caesar what deserves to Caesar. Give to God what deserves to God. What Christ realized was that if he had answered one way, saying refuse your taxes, then they could say to the Romans, hey, he's teaching people to not pay Caesar. Oh. And so Christ would be in trouble with Caesar. Uh -huh. Or if he said, yes, pay your taxes, then all the Jews who hated paying taxes would be angry with Jesus, and then it'd be uh, in trouble with the Jews. He is compromising. So he realized that he was, they were trying to have him uh, be in trouble with one group or the other, and Christ just skirted right around them is by that saying, in your book? Give into Caesar what is Caesar's, and give into God what is God's. So your book clarifies logically. Well, it, it, it talks about that, but it also talks about all of the things in society, <laughs> the logic and science. Yeah, we can't live with uh, fate alone, right? We need to work. We need to be self-sufficient. How science is derailed by propaganda. Um, There's more to it than the politics, title. Politics and economics. How logic can help you understand the craziness that's going on in the world today. So I think I will really avail of that book. With a good price, <laughs> Mr. Martin. Okay, so thank you so much for guesting. Can you show? My and pleasure. this is just one of the hard copies of his 36 books that makes you really think twice how we should exist intellectually and spiritually and emotionally, correct? That's yes. what your aim. Thank you so much, Mr. Martin. It's really an honor to meet your wife first. And then that's his lovely wife for 16 years, 17 years. 16 years. 16 years and we've been friends you participated in my project like several years ago and then i came back so i think i'm in my third 40 years now or something and i will deal with the book so that i would know perfectly that i exist for a reason i would know logically why and do something about it okay so um, i think the book will help me entitled the logical christian bye for now mr martin thank you, thank you so much